Hello. In this video, I'm going to show how to derive uh, complete der derivation 2.6 LRS245. So this one's a theorem. There are no premises, just a conclusion. So we're not going to be bringing in any premises. Again, we can make an assumption. It's not going to help us here. We're not going to be able to use that. The only way we could possibly use that is if we had this, right? We don't have any rules that usefully apply to this. We can stick negations on and do a junction, but that's not going to help us. If we get three, we could say, oh good, two, three, ID. We could just as easily say three DD. And so the only situation where we can apply a rule to line two, we can already box and cancel without using two. So two is just might be distracting. So let's not use it. So instead, we're just going to use our show conditional strategy. Get the two conditionals, put them together with CB, up giving us the conclusion to which we apply direct derivation, boxing, and canceling our first line. So, okay, let's go ahead and get to work on this first conditional. It's a conditional, so we're going to say assume CD. We could do show consequent. It's not going to be a problem, but in this case we don't need to, so we're going to skip it. We're going to say simplification left and simplification right. So we have P and Q, and we're just going to put them back together in the reverse order. And that's the derivation of this conditional, right? Um, I mean, this says if P and Q are true, then Q and P is true. It if this is true, then both parts are true. And if both parts of this are true, then the whole thing is true. So indeed, if this is true, then that's true. The order uh, commutes and flop, it's fine. And we can show the conditional in the other direction as well, and just the same way. We'll assume CD, we'll split it up, and we'll put them back together. And we want the second one, because the second one is our consequent. We want P and Q, and that's the consequent to which we can apply CD. Good. Having completed those two, we will put them together. Oops. And apply that to line 8. And that's our conclusion. So there we go. Once we see, okay, we're just going to show these two conditionals and then put them together with CB. Good. And these two conditionals are pretty straightforward to show. We're just taking them apart. So what this derivate, what this argument says is, hey, these two, whenever this is true, that's true. And whenever that's true, that's true. Whenever this is false, that's false. Whenever this is false, that's false. These two always agree. They always have the same truth value. And we can derive that from no, we can derive this statement that they have the same truth value from no premises, meaning that this statement is always, and given that our derivation system uh, doesn't make any mistakes about what's true and what's false, this sentence is always true. In other words, this is equivalent to that, which, yeah. So this is good. It's showing that our derivation system can um, capture important facts about how, say, the AND symbol works, that the AND symbol doesn't care what order the um, its pieces come in, unlike the condition, right? Um, this and this say quite different things. Now, I mean, it's kind of obvious to you that this and this say the same thing. That's because you can understand logic, right? And it's good that our system can capture that, can say, yeah, I too, my derivation system captures that element of our understanding, and this is how it does that. So that's derivation 245. There you go.